Hello and welcome to tutorial 143 in this series of tutorials and programs from markplex.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at an analysis of volume and trade size using the time and sales provider and also the price series provider. What I've done is applied the program we're looking at three times to a chart and we've got various different metrics uh, showing and the first one we're going to look at using this program is the quartile volume so what I've done here in the program is each bar each trade is put into a vector and it's put in by size of trade so for example the largest number of contracts will go at the top of the vector the smallest number will go at the bottom of the vector and then uh, what we do we take the number say for example it's 100 and then for the 25th uh, percentile volume we take the top 25 and we add the volume of those trades then we divide it by the total volume for that bar and we do similarly for the 10 percentile and the 5 percentile then we plot that on the chart and you'll see immediately that uh, this is running in real time, so we don't have access to historic data with this program. But essentially, when the plot goes up like this, it means that we've got more volume at the, uh, the higher ends. So that's the first plot there available in the program. And incidentally, if we just go to the analysis techniques, we can see that the, uh, the way that we, uh, we access that is by selecting in inputs QVOL to true, that would be the upper quartile, T vol to true, which is the 10 percentile, and then F vol, which is the 5 percentile, and uh, they're all set to true. Now, the second one, a little bit more simple. What we're doing for each bar is dividing the volume by the number of ticks for that bar, and to do that, we're using a price series provider. So that's quite as simple, and the data for that is available historically. And then the third one is, again, not available historically, but what this is doing is looking in the vector and looking at the very the item at the very top of the vector. In other words, the, uh, the largest trade for that specific bar, and then it's plotting the number of contracts. So if we just go along here and we'll see that uh, that number is 151 for this bar. So they are, they are the, uh, the, the plots available. And another thing to bear in mind, apart from the real-time historic issue, is that um, the time and sales provider is not um, synchronized with the price information. So you might get some situations where a trade is associated with one bar actually it occurs a different bar and uh, so I although I, I think for the the purposes of of this that um, I hope would not affect things now let's look at the program oh and incidentally I'll just uh, mention while we're in the the uh, inputs that uh, for the average volume we would need to set up have fault true and then for the uh, the highest number of contracts we'd need to set that, this one up to true the only reason that I've not got them all going together is because they're using quite different scales so let's have a look at the program and this is available for download if you want to save yourself some uh, some typing I'm going to start with the the once statement and in the one statement we do the setup of the price series provider and the time and sales provider and you can see the way that I've set those up there and these are pretty similar to what you would get if you used the toolbox and let me just show you what I mean by that if we go to the toolbox and we choose for example time and sales provider then we go to properties and you can see all the different uh, options here some of which we don't need and also for the event we're going to be using an update event so if we we're going to use that we double click there and then what you could do if you are creating this from scratch is go to the designer generated code copy this uh, or obviously modified to to the exact needs copy this from here into the program and then delete the item from the tray at the bottom there so uh, that's the first thing we do in the one statement we create the price series provider and we automatically determine what sort of uh, time zone the chart is on we load that and then similarly for the time and sales and then as I mentioned we have an update event for that then the next thing we're going to look at is the update event so we're going to go up the program this needs to be above 
the one statement and that is here and uh, what we're doing we're looking for a reason that something has been added and um, once we know something's been added we're looking for specifically a trade tick type trade if we have a trade what we're going to do is we're going to record into a vector which we're calling trade vect we're going to record the size of that trade into the vector now what record does is it makes sure that the highest values are higher up and the lowest values are lower down and effectively what it's doing is sorting making sure that the vector is sorted all the time the other thing we do is we keep a updated amount of the trade volume so let's have a quick look at the record method and you'll see that we have two inputs we have the value that we're adding and we have the vector that we're adding to and then we're outputting a vector and uh, what we're doing essentially is first line we're saying if there's nothing in the vector then just add it to the vector using pushback then we're saying if it is greater than the highest item in the vector then add it above that that's uh, simple enough the next time we're saying if it's lower than the lowest value in the vector then we just add it to the end of the vector but then it gets a bit more complicated if the value is greater than the lowest value in the vector uh, then what we need to do is we need to loop through the vector and we're just going to be doing the, the value vector uh, sorry whole vector dot count minus two down to one and we say for, for example if the new value is greater than this um, the uh, the value here in value two and uh, it is less than the value in value two minus one in other words the uh, the value um, on either side of where it would be positioned if we were adding it to the vector then we insert it into the vector and we break otherwise we just keep going through the count and this makes sure that uh, new values are placed exactly where they should be in the vector and then we just return the vector then the other thing is being through the one statement is the last tick of the bar and this is why I was mentioning the synchronization issue because the way that we do this is on the last tick of the bar we look at the vector and we can then very quickly calculate the number of volume volume uh, the amount of volume in that top uh, quart quartile and we do that just through again going through a loop so we can say uh, literally from 0 to 0.25 of the, the count of the vector and then for the quartile volume we just add the trade vector that's the, uh, the number of trades in those, in those items and then for the, uh, the percentile and for the 5 percentile we do that uh, in a similar way but we just make sure that the, uh, the value is less than uh, 0.1 in the uh, 10 percentile case and less than 0 0.05 in the 5 percentile case and we just add those value, uh, values to appropriate um, variables and then when, we, when we've done that we, uh, we check that the total volume which as you recall we were calculating as we go along based on the, uh, the update event for the time and sales provider if that is zero then we can calculate our uh, ratios just by dividing each of those variables quartile vol 10 percent vol and five percent vol by the trade vol and then uh, those values are ready to plot and then also uh, if we wish to plot the uh, well, whether we do or not we're going to calculate the highest number of contracts and that's easy enough because we know that in the trade vector it's going to be the, the highest value which is the the zero element in that vector then finally we do the plots and as I mentioned before these have been set up so the user inputs can determine which plots are shown on the chart and incidentally you can see the calculation for the uh, for the average volume there plotting that plot one and uh, let me just show you the namespaces and the inputs which we didn't get to see so there's the uh, the inputs and the variables and then the namespaces here tsdata.marketdata eel system eel system dot collections i've also got uh, same tick opt set to false and infinite loop detect set 
to false. So hopefully you will find this useful. Uh, as I mentioned, it is available for download or if you wish, you can uh, create it yourself, which in some ways is probably a better uh, learning experience, but uh, it's uh, entirely your choice. I hope you have found this useful. Thank you.